Pranakosha live stream. Hey folks, it's Matt at Pranakasha Productions, and we are doing another lesson with Benjamin. This is Benjamin Lauersheimer, my cello teacher. Hi, everyone. And did I already say I was mad at Pranakash Productions? Yeah, you mentioned it. Okay, well, just to be clear, I'm Matt at Pranakash Productions, and this is my cello. So today <laughs> we're going to do three, we're going to attempt three pages of the last movement of my cello concerto. So we're going to do pages 11, 12, and 13. And, um, Technically, we're doing one line of page 10, but we're not going to count that. We're just going to call it part of page 11, otherwise known as letter H. So um, I didn't say this last time, but the form of this last movement is um, a theme and variation. So um, each, each little chunk is a different variation on the overall theme. And strictly speaking it's not quite a theme in variations there's a little bit of leeway which is fine because when i originally wrote it i wanted it to be a rondo which is kind of normal for our last movement but then it quickly morphed into a theme in variation so anyway that's what we got Okay, so right off the bat, it's like two the dots are way too dotty, right? Yeah, they just seem a little, they seem a little thin, but um, they just, uh, like one thing that like needs to be a bit more of your friend, just be careful of the, like at the very beginning, like feel those dots a little heavier and that will help you to like not get too much ahead of yourself. Da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Yeah, feel those like three separate sixteenth notes at the beginning of H. Like, just feel those a little bit heavier. Yeah, da, da, ba, 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 da, da. Like that'll help you to be a little bit more pronounced. Your tempo is fine. Just um, when you get to that passage, for example, ninety nine, one hundred. If when you get to bar one hundred, uh, just uh, don't worry about them being too dotted. Just play in, give it each a little bit more bow and attention. It's going to feel like you're playing slower, but you won't be. It'll be exactly where it needs to be, and you'll be able to hear yourself a lot clearer. Okay. There you go. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I should just, well, let's just see what happens. And the composer did write Non Troppo Allegro. So there's no reason for me to rush. <laughs> Damn it. A lot but like a lot better like i would say that every time you have to change the upper voices of your uh the pa the interval passage of 100 uh bars 100 till 103 the beginning there emphasize the changes and that'll give you a little bit more time so settle in and that will also help every time you change the interval you're closing off a previous part of the string that was uh, ringing. So like, give it a little bit more emphasis so that way it can kind of ring through. And also just be uh, that pick up into H, one, two, three, and one, and two, and three, and ba, da, da, dee. You're just kind of going da, da, yeah. Just, it's not, it seems a little bit rhythmically ambiguous to me. Okay. 
That was great, right? Yeah, that, that was very clear to me. Just because, like, you know, g give your conductor something to hang his hat, their hat on. Actually, I did write dashes in bar 99, so I probably should make a distinction <laughs> between dots and dashes. Are you meaning to, are, is this, is this integral to what you're doing or? Well, I mean, I wrote it, so I probably should play what I wrote. <laughs> I mean, like to be, to be honest with you, because this is all part of like the same gesture, I would just keep them all as dots or all as lines. Cause it kind of like, to me as a listener, it seems a little bit confusing. Okay. I mean, like, All it right, might well, make your, like, like, just one, one small thing. I'm not sure if I suggested this or if this is your own creative solution. Bar 99, yeah. uh, where you go from the C sharp with your fourth finger to the D string with your fourth finger, I would just use the open D string and just cross over. Um, where is this? Uh, the last, uh, like, one, two, three, th uh, beat three, bar 99. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Like that? Yeah. So you would do a string crossing that way and then back. Well, I wouldn't have thought of that. I mean, like, uh, it's like, it's a suggestion. I'm thinking just because the four, four shift seems a little tense and you're using your fourth finger a lot in this passage, which is, you know, as someone who's addicted to their fourth finger for this sort of stuff, I'd say maybe just give yourself a moment's respite so that way you don't have to worry about tuning the C sharp to D natural shift. Um, so wait a minute. Let's go slow. Like that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Like open, four, open. Oh. Like that? Yeah. I mean, can you try it again slowly? It does, but it it does do some dramatic foreshadowing to a following variation. Yep. I mean, like the material is definitely related. Like, can you just try that again slowly for me, and I'll watch a little bit more carefully just to make sure you're. Yeah, I would do it like that way. So that way you don't actually have to shift back. Like you don't have to shift from the C sharp to the D natural back to the A natural. You can just extend your first finger after you get to the uh, open D string. It'll just make your, it'll make it feel a little bit more seamless. Okay. I mean, we do know that I'm string crossing challenged. No, no, well, I mean, okay, like your concerto is full of string crossings. So if this concerto doesn't fix that problem, I don't know what will. So just like, just remember, like, you know, feel heavy in your elbow and use your elbow, not your forearm or wrist, just to cl just across the strings. Feel loose in the arm. All right, looseness. <laughs> There you go. But then you, there was a lot of other strings getting hit. Yeah, well, I mean, like, practice makes better, right? Okay, I'm not going to write it in, but I'm going to consider it. Yeah, like, just, it's a, it's a parenthetical. Okay, parentheticals are fine. Okay, yeah. Today, we, our goal today, besides making it through three pages, is to not utter a single F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we can do that. All right, I'm going back a little bit. Yes, yeah, uh, start from like. Never mind, Matt. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't be so part of the joke. Start like kind of like da 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 dee da da ba 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 b. Did the wrong fingering. Okay, 
Yeah, so I think I was trying to emphasize the chord changes like you were saying. Mm -hmm. It felt better, and I think it actually sounded better, didn't it? Yeah, like it makes your voicings a lot clearer just because like all these intervals kind of happen in the same G and D string range, like playing at faster tempos and kind of not altering your bow stroke in any way kind of makes it all sound like this. Now it actually feels like there's like orchestral shape in your voice. So keep going with that. And like when you, after emphasizing, bum, 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 beep, beep, bum, like after you emphasize with the down bow, your elbow or your rather your entire arm for the epo will kind of feel like there's this elastic band that's bringing your arm back in. So it'll just kind of like come back in. So you won't have to force the up bow ever. It'll really help with like sort of a rebounding bow stroke. Okay, let's start right there and see if I can get that. Uh, I'll, other question, do you think my end pin is long enough right now? Cause I, I got a new end pin and I might not have set it right. Um, yeah, I mean like it's, you don't seem as hunched over as you normally do. Okay, then I guess it's good. Yeah, like you want to kind of have it where, yeah, the back of your cello should sort of meet where your ribbed cage kind of separates and this kind of leans against there. Okay, right by my Orville symbol. Exactly. My Orville, um, Tahiti Island, um, Paradise, Honorabilia symbol. Okay. Ah! a G bomb right there. <laughs> okay. Uh, just like with this. Okay. Just like with this passage here where you're no longer doing it in uh, double stops, I'd say you're kind of, pre you're pressing too much closer. You're or, sorry. You're playing too close to the bridge with the wrong kind of stroke. If you're going to play closer to the bridge like that, you need to be a little bit more on your string versus off of it. You're talking about this. <laughs> that stuff yeah exactly like, yeah exactly like you need to just be a little bit more on the string for things and then that will help you out a lot okay i agree so yeah it's always when i get there it's usually way too picky sounding <laughs> So yeah so broaden it it sounds way better yeah like think still think broad like the dots are more of the fact that you're not hiding your bow changes so like don't try to overemphasize the dots and don't get like too steely by getting too close to the bridge unless just feel a little bit more condensed and into the string just try just the open a string for a second like yeah or whatever like the open a string might be a little bit too tinny but like try doing something in first position but just one pitch and just yeah da 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 just practice that string yeah there you go maybe not even bounce maybe yeah that's the that's the stroke i would suggest going for okay so actually, I guess it's the string costume that's messing me up again. Did you hear how it slowly degenerated as I went down? Yeah, so you have to change your contact point. Like, you know, play, like, allow your elbow to cross strings with you. And again, play into the string. As you approach the G, the more into the string you'll need to be. And remember, as you go lower down, your bow will kind of end up farther out, so try to make sure that your bow doesn't end up at the tip. Or maybe I also need to move farther from the mic so I don't feel like I'm about to smack it. Okay. Oh, what the heck? My mute was too close to the bridge and it was annoying me. How is that? 
Sorry. Yeah, no, that sounds a lot better. Like that, the stroke really worked there. So that's what I, that's what I would do more of. Um, it still has that carb cardboard pinch type of sound that I get when I'm actually still killing the sound. Try using a little more bow then, a little bit more length. Okay, because I'm trying to get, we should get back to that resonant thing that I need to really achieve. <laughs> Okay, can you try this for me, Matthew? Can you try that passage? And this time, instead of doubling up on each note, can you just go bum, 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 deem, bum, bum, just playing each one as if it's a, it, as if it was an eighth note. Okay. okay, does that sound like, okay, on this side of Zoom, it doesn't sound very resonant. So can you like so that's why I'm getting you to only one note. So yum bum bum. Try to like make the sound you want to make. Like that. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So how are you using the bow differently? Well, for one thing, my arm isn't nearly as tense. <laughs> Yeah. So, mostly I'm just trying to get into that more open, resonant frame of mind. And maybe I'm playing closer to the fingerboard. Yeah. Your contact point has changed, so that's good. So, like, it's more like try playing more in the middle of where the bridge is and the middle of the fingerboard. Like, yeah, there. That way you'll get a nice rub. And then it would be nice if it was in tune. Yeah, so don't try to vibrato right now. Yeah, that's already better now. Good, there we go. That's already a lot better. So like, um, yeah, now um, can you now shit now? pretend to shape it like now like musically shape it but still only do one note instead of two good the one thing i would say is that sometimes you're like um, you're lifting a little bit too much, like yum bum. It's usually your up bow that you lift off. So yum bum bum bum. Like don't try to lift anything. Just try to stay, just try to stay vibrant, vibrant as possible. Now try the, sorry, Matthew, go ahead. So my body, I was doing sort of cello type of body things, and I was just trying to get that open hearted feeling. Yeah. Now try to, try to do that with the double stroke. Yadam, bottom, 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 bottom. Again, resonant, resonance always. much better so like whenever you're not sure or if your sound is ever something that you don't want isolate it and make it sound the way that you want to so in this case it was not necessarily that you were doing anything wrong okay okay 
It was just that your, your point of contact was not right for the kind of passage that this is becoming. So finding a way to be extremely vibrant is the best way. Like, uh, this is maybe a bit too self-serving to say, but there's a great quote by Isai, and he said, like, don't always be vibrating, always be vibrant. And it, it, it really speaks to what he was able to do as a violinist. So always encourage your strings to ring as naturally as possible and keep them always in the round circle. Don't try to like overcome uh, that by vibratoing. He always kind of felt that that would just detract from what you were doing. So make the string ring as naturally as possible. Okay, I can buy that. All right, yeah. let's keep going because we're supposed to make it to three pages and it's like half an hour into it. Well, I mean, there's a lot, there was a lot into that. There, there was a lot in that passage to kind of like cover. So I think that now that you, now that you were able to crack it, now you know the difference between the 16ths that are corded versus the 16ths that are separated. So I think that shall no longer be a real problem for you. All right, okay. onwards and upwards, Excalibur. Okay, so there's actually a slight cadenza that's coming up, but I'm just going to skip it today. Okay. I mean, it's like four bars long. It's really short, but I didn't practice it, so I don't want to destroy it on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the secrets. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we suddenly went back into this horrible sound. Oh, sorry. I'll go back. can't play that it's not like it's that hard no it's not easy finger patterns here so like i would don't be too hard on yourself okay um so in the interest of time can we just skip <laughs> can we just get to this part and somehow get through it sure well now i can't even play this that's okay do you want to skip to k I think the solution to this is I just need to practice it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you're just not quite sure. Like, once you know what your left hand is doing, that's just the only that's just the only question that you kind of have left for yourself. Yeah. All right, we can skip. Oh, but I've just like plowed through it. I've never actually figured it out right. OK, so now now we get to hear a little bit of the theme. Now we're on letter L. Yeah, that was pretty good, right? Yeah, like the interval, like the chords were good. When you got to the uh, three, seven, six, five, when you got to 135, you kind of went to your pinched nasally sound a little bit. So just be a little gentler. Don't force it to happen. Yeah, like, like when we get to M, we're going to hear a lot of that kind of crap. <laughs> so let's get, let's pre, we'll pre-redeem ourselves ahead of letter M. Okay, that was a lot better, right? That was yeah, that was the best. See, like don't like don't get into the mindset that there's not enough time for this. Like 
take the time to make a nice sound. It's always the most rewarding. Don't just push through. All right, and now that we're at letter M, let's push through. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How much time we got? Okay, we got a half hour, so there's a lot to, there's time to suffer through this. Is that your phone ringing or is that mine? That's the garbage can truck in the background of my apartment. That's why I'm just muting myself every once in a while when I can hear it. Sorry. So go ahead. I can. It's not you. It's me. No, it's me. It's it's totally me, Benjamin. It's not you. Wait. Can, can do you not hear the garbage truck? I, this is really fascinating content. Okay. Let's. Okay. Let, let's let's take it away at M. Okay. <laughs> So your string crossings have gotten a lot cleaner and a lot less tense. Still a long ways to go for most things. Uh, I know that I've probably said this before on one of our recorded lessons. Just like when I'm when I'm following along with you and trying to be the ima uh, the imaginative conductor. Sometimes you're like ba di da di da bi da di da. Like sometimes it's like quarter and then something that resembles like triplet grace notes and then the next beat. Yump, bump, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Like, it's okay to stretch out a few of them, but you stretch out too many. So then ch choose the ones that are really your favorites, and then you have to kind of make the rest not as special. Because right now it feels like every separated uh, 16th note is special. And, like, you gotta, you gotta choose your moments, my friend, because there's just too many of them all in a row. Because if there's too many special things, then none of them are special. Well, there is that, like, you know, like you have some really like what you, what you did in 154, I liked, and that's what we did the, uh, the one time. Um, also, what you did in 159, where you were emphasizing the upper notes there, like, that's very cool. I love that. It's just sometimes when you're getting through like the like when you get to 147, you kind of do it for every um, change and it starts to become just a little too monotonous. And, but like even but even if even if, let's say that that was okay that's fi that's fine monotonous and through its specialty it's just incredibly hard to follow rhythmically speaking right and like granted like you know like look you're, you're playing most of the time really clear but like the conductor might be with you being able to beat the air but the musicians are always not going to necessarily be exactly in the same place try to make it as clear as possible by sticking a little bit more to your guns and that way when you hand the conductor your score you'll be like this note this note and this note i'm taking a little bit of time so just be wary but not every single bar be on the tip of your toes right. well i mean i shouldn't in this one the conductor should just be able to beat time he shouldn't be having to adjust to me at all so like if i'm doing some stuff it has to be within the framework of all the four beats exactly i mean like maybe listen like listen back to this when i mean you're going to listen back to this at some point before you publish it but like just watch yourself and listen to yourself of what you're doing and try to like see it like for the most part you're great about being very clear but you'll notice that there are some times where it's like one two three four one two three four etc i'm exaggerating but like that, that's the kind of shape okay that's not good okay 
Okay, let's just let's see if we can undo that. So All right, like that. already a thousand times better now we just kind of like okay so while giving you that you start like uh around 156 or like yeah the two beats before what bar 156 then you start to actually play more metronomically accurate in in a sense that you stay in tempo uh now the problem was now you were rushing <laughs> before like from m to letter n i was rushing that never happens sometimes but like uh and then the other classic spot because now your life is not as difficult letter o be careful you were kind of all of a sudden pushing ahead because really? you know yeah bump ba da ba bump body da da like almost before i could beat one like for example uh the transition between 165 to 166 bump ba da da dump ba da da bump ba da bump ba da da like you almost like skipped over the eighth note and came in like a 16th or 30 seconds, just a little too early, be wary. Okay, so that's the classic thing where when you get to something that's easy, you start playing it faster. Yeah, so just not like- that you... letter O is easy, it's not easy, but it's just- No more crossings. No longer, there's no more string crossing, so that part of my life is behind me. Yeah, but now, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so just like <laughs> stare down the metro. Yeah, okay. I mean like, just stare down the metronome with this guy and then you'll be fine. I mean, it's just like, I think that you're trying to do too many things at once right now, or you're trying to make sure that you don't, you stay metronomically accurate, but you feel like you have to now compensate by pushing forward. But like, you now you've convinced me that this can happen at the 156 area, because then you started being steady for quite a long time. So that was great. So just, you know, okay, don't, like, don't, it can like, be done. It yeah, it can be done. Just whatever you do, just don't get excited. Let the fire just kind of happen through the music that you wrote. Don't try to live it because that's if you take if you tamper with the machine, that's when things go wrong. If you just let it be its own thing, it'll be its own thing. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, don't, you know, don't wake a sleeping dog and also don't pet a sleeping cat. Whatever analogy you want to use, just like if it's going to be fine, just let it be fine. Don't summon the Kraken exactly let it just stay wherever it is <laughs> all right should we go on then yep let's go on okay now molto cantabile dolce <laughs> Did a G bomb, but I pulled it back. Okay, so at that point, how are we doing? Uh, okay, just like be careful, yum, bum, pop, pop, bum. Like make sure that those two sixteenths don't become some sort of dotted rhythm. Like in one seventy five, that was your worst offense. Bum, pa, da, dee, da, or whatever. I the pitches I sang were not correct, but like the rhythm was, yeah. 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 Like okay. Yeah. Re now remember. Yeah, for some reason you've gone back to being pinched. Like, if you're going to be sweet, don't pinch somebody. Just, like, be sweet. Gentle. There we 
we go. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you're going to be sweet to somebody, like, you know, be gentle about it. <laughs> okay, let's go to the beginning of this variation. So I should be able to play that beautifully. Yeah, you're you're using too fast of a bow sweet. Sorry, I'm singing the wrong part. Like bum ba da 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 da. Okay, let's just. I gotta put more into it. I mean, whatever. How about that? Yeah, just like be gentle with the shift. I think you're overthinking that shift. Bum ba da 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 di. Just release your arm and go upwards. Oh shoot. Well, okay, that like right idea, wrong thing, but okay. Like also, are you do you have enough time to play that first G that long? I'm skeptical. Uh yeah, sort of. I mean, well, let's see. Bum. Can you just like okay, your G is like the Yeah. I just feel that that G is like this long and then the rest of it is like comparatively that. So can you just like make the yum ba da 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 dee? Just make the G a little shorter, AKA. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That was the best one yet. Now when you, yeah, when you shift up to the trill, release, don't capture it, release. There we go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah, da 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 dee da. What did I do wrong? You went like yeah, da 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 dee da. Like it's just not. It doesn't resemble the rhythm you wrote. It just sounds. Yeah, yeah there you go. Just like, yeah. Oh, I see. You were saying that I turned the sixteenths almost into a thirty-second. Yeah, like you, like you kind of like dot the D natural or the E natural, and then you kind of pay it forward with the sixteenth notes, and it sounds a little wonky. Okay. How about that? That's there we go. And now I can get behind that. You know what? It still sounds rushed, doesn't it? Yeah, like what's uh, it sounds a little rushed just because you're not convincing yourself and you're therefore also not convincing me. So, OK, at letter Q, every at letter Q, every time you have the upper voice, you're going like, yum, bum, yada, dum, bum, yada. Like it's not about the fact it's not about um, accenting. It's just like all of a sudden your bow speed just suddenly jabs that top note when you're trying to make it special yum bum be da dum bum be da dum bum your bow speed for it is too fast you're kind of like swatting it out of the air yeah it's too i mean it's supposed to be expansive and beautiful it's not yeah exactly so you have to be expansive on that first note bum bum be da dum bum be da -dum. like that's why it's very hyden esque it's like bowing out of this you know bowing gesture Oh, that was nice. Yeah, see? Oh, that's way better. Yeah, exactly. So like, make, like, yeah, show, show us the soprano voice here. Don't show us, don't hit it. <laughs> okay. Now we just have to play it in tune. Oh, I whacked it. I know why I'm doing it. Why is it? Whacking those top notes because I, I don't want them to be flat. And somehow in my mind, I think if I whack it, it'll be sure that it's right on pitch. But that's not correct, right? Obviously. Yeah, just like, you know, just be nice along the way down. It'll help the, it'll help each shift. <laughs> 
So what if I even try to sort of connect the up into the down bow? Instead of like that. I mean, you can like, I mean, I didn't, you can like either one is fine by me. It's more just about like the fact that I just didn't want you to hit the top note. Like, I like the way that you did it before the bum, bum, pee, da, dum, bum, pee, because I know how it has like a bum, 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 bum. I like this. I like the idea that you're trying to be two voices rather than just one. Okay. <laughs> but it's not whack it. So I think I just need to be gentler on the down bows. Yeah, just like think lyrical, like your, th like your bow, okay, think lyrical with your bow. It's just a little too angular because you're trying to make like emphasis is not a sharp thing. Sometimes emphasis is the W in watermelon. Okay. That was nice. Yeah. Oh, darn it. Kind of made it through that yeah like i think yeah like to me that's like that that's the direction you kind of like need to go because a lot of your a lot of this concerto is very goal oriented which is great because it has a very clear shape but the problem is you can't like always be constantly driving forward you have to kind of take your foot off and enjoy the scenery and this is one of those sort of like serene moments where you can really enjoy each note and each passage as it comes along rather than just kind of see the telephone poles pass by in the mirror, you know? So like, you know, just like, you know, look around, you know, imagine like, I don't know, this is probably not the imagery you were going for, but to me, this is very ballad, like very love songy. So, you know, be endearing here. Actually, you know what I was, the images that were going through my mind in this uh, movement were kind of a con believe it or not, it was a con combination of Prokofiev and like um like anime, like you know, like something that you might see like in Kiki's delivery service or something like that. Uh, I love the one of my favorite movies. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah, so like, you know, like it's very, you know, allow it to be atmospheric and you know, with the idea that there's not really a, a constant narrative drive forward. There's just sometimes it's just nice to be in something. It doesn't need to always right. be a big something, but just like allow every allow the listener and allow yourself to just kind of like zone out with you in this moment of respite. Because you just right. came so, from, Yeah. Like one thing, when when you listen to the orchestra behind it, there's a lot of um pop pop um pop pop um pop, which gives it sort of that sort of kind of a Prokofiev sound, and then again it gives it that that anime feel to it. If that's what I was trying to get, and so yeah. I have to now be able to rise to the occasion as the soloist to make to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd say that the best way to sort of do that is, like, just be be aware, like, as you said, like, okay, like, there's, if, you, if you're using the Prokofiev analogy for this, like, there's that bum, 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 like, between those solid pillars, you have that, like, gray space. So if you can occupy that by just being very calm in those spaces, that's fine. Just don't make it seem chaotic. Yeah, let's try R. <laughs>
so that seemed like I was rushing, but actually at this, I was supposed to rush because there was a gradual accelerando poco a poco. So for once, rushing was good. Yeah, no, I didn't feel I didn't feel like the equilibrium was like disturbed. Just yeah, like the feeling that you brought at R, just bring that to letter Q and that'll help you just to kind of like you know okay. a little easy. edgeless. Uh it's th well, I mean it's three fifty two for me, so we got about Okay, that was pretty nice actually. Yeah. So we need beautiful, beautiful, animated, flowery, huge meadows, expansive, you know, type of Kiki's delivery. Like Kiki, when she's running around with her boyfriend, you know that scene? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Press the trill, release the trill. Is that the truth? The trill was the least of my worries. By the time I got, okay. there, yeah, I made it. I know, but that yeah, that's the reason why you pinched it because you're like, now I have that energy. You know, no, just like, okay. you know, I mean, if you really want to cheat, just like keep your left hand really close to the string and just flutter it. Okay, let's try. Uh, this time I'll pay a little bit of attention to the trill. Uh... How's that? Yeah, that's that's good. Just like relax, relax. You're like, bring it close, bring it closer. Your trill is a little too distinct. Like, oh yeah. Not that hammering it so much. Yeah, like you can start hammered. That's fine. But then, like, as in not like not as in drunk, but as in like you know you can bring it like bring it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. But just like you know. You can start with it being very enunciated, but then flutter out and just allow your muscles in your hands to kind of like uh, relax and then just have your third finger like just very subtly go up and down on the string to interrupt. There you go. Good. Don't worry about it being super fast either. Yeah, no, exactly. Like just, yeah. And like if you, and if you're you also if, if you want to make it a little bit easier you try like a tiny touch of vibrato like it just like a, allow your left hand knuckles to relax a little bit vibratoing on trill that's a sin it's the way it's the way to make something like this last for a little while and also again like this is this is not the main slice this is an effect to something else yeah basically the, the orchestra takes over they basically start playing the main theme <laughs> They go dum 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 dum. Okay, and then I come in with my thing. Okay, so it would be nice if I could not only hit those notes, but it could get a, a vibrato and a big sound on them. All right, well, don't, well, number one, don't play thin. And number two, like, don't lean your head forward on it. Like, get out of there. So, so. 
So I should go back like this. Well, I mean, like not like not. No, no, no. Just like you're going, you're leaning forward, and then you're kind of like stooping. So like just stay stay here. You know, like kind of the analogy that I like to use is like you know the samurai armor, how like there's the sheets that like lie in the shoulders, and they just kind of sit like that. Like that's kind of the shape you want to make with your arms here, where it's just kind of like here, like like this. Like, see how my my shoulders are not raised. Ooh, that was a nice sound. Yeah, see, it doesn't take any energy. Get out of there. Yeah, no, okay, don't bring your elbow up and smack that note with vibrato. Be nice. Be gentle. It's an A string. That was pretty good, I think. Yep, that worked. It was better. It was the best sound I've ever gotten on it. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, make, like, make the apex with your, with, with what you're doing. Oh, darn, we're out of time. I can't play the whole thing through. Oh, well. Bad. <laughs> yeah, you can keep your secrets till next episode. Yeah. So, thank you, um, Professor Lowersheimer. <laughs> Not a professor yet. You're Dr. Lowersheimer, though. Not a doctor either. Like, I'm about, I am currently a, a doctoral candidate, but I am not a doctor. Okay. Dr. Candidate Lowersheimer. There we go. <laughs> Benjamin, aka Benjamin. Thank you so much for our lesson. Pleasure. And we will look forward to playing the first couple, first three pages of the last movement at next lesson, and then we will have covered the entire last movement. Except mm -hmm. we didn't, we didn't do that tiny little cadenza. Yeah, well, okay. you, well, you can work, you can woodshed it this week. So, yeah, yeah. All right, Benjamin, thank you very much. Now, do you know about Star Trek and Spock and that kind of thing? I know it's on your channel. If I want to find out more, okay. Do you know what Live Long and Prosper is? Oh, okay. Then we. But I, like, wait. Do you curve the thumb or is it just straight out? Well, to tell you the truth, in a very early Pranakasha live stream episode, I went like this. And then I realized that's uncool because your thumb's supposed to come out. Okay. Because it's actually based on a Jewish um, uh, blessing. That's where Leonard Nimoy got the ideas. They, they did this thing like this. Okay. And he was like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to have Spock do that. Except I'm going to tilt it up so he can see it. So that's where it came from. That's clever. Very clever. Yep. Okay, so now let's do it for real. Live long and prosper. Fantastic creations emerging spontaneously from the space of life. For the benefit of all beings everywhere. We gotta change.